welcome to Board Gems. This is my regular video series in which I go over older board game gems, with new episodes in the 3rd, 13th, and 23rd of the month. I like to go over older board games, usually 9 or 10 years old or older, and I usually prefer kind of older forgotten, kind of those, those hidden gems, so to speak. Um, not really doing that this week. Uh, this was a request, I think. It's got to be a reason I'm doing this, right? But it's not that old. The original version is only nine years old at the time of recording, 2012, and the newest edition is just a couple of years old. And it was nominated for Spiel des Jahres. Uh, the game is Las Vegas. And it was designed by Rudiger Dorn, published by Alea, which is an imprint of Ravensburger. It is for two to five players. Um, I personally wouldn't bother playing it with two, but with a variant, you can make it work. Um, but otherwise, it's good with all player counts. There is a variant that works well at the lower player counts. Um, ages eight and up and takes maybe 30 minutes to play. That's all pretty fair. There was a version that came out just in Target in the U.S., I believe, which is in like a kind of like a, a cube box that looks like a die. I do know that in 2014, uh, they released an expansion called Las Vegas Boulevard. And this is, this is a bunch of mini expansions. You can use some or all of them. Uh, one great thing is it increases the player count to, I think, eight players. And the game still works at eight players. It's, it's pretty great. This, however, is extremely hard to find now. If you were to buy this, it would probably cost you a pretty penny. So I think people, including me, were hoping that someday they would make a Las Vegas big box that has both. Both number eight in the Alea medium box series and number eight and a half. <laughs> but that's not what Alea did. In the late 2010s, I don't know, 2018 maybe, they came out with Las Vegas Royale. So Las Vegas Royale can best be described as the gamer version of Las Vegas. That Las Vegas is a super simple dice game that anybody can play. You can have three generations of people around the table. You know, grandparents playing with grandkids. It's that kind of game. And Las Vegas Royale is one that's been kind of customized to be more appealing to hobbyists. So it has very little of the Boulevard expansion content, but also has some new stuff that wasn't in Boulevard. I am going to show you how Las Vegas plays, and I'm going to use this edition because that's the one that's easiest to find now. Afterwards, I'll talk about the differences and, of course, why they are gems. To set up the game, set up the board on the table between the players. In this version, there's three kind of jigsaw puzzle pieces you put together, and you can put this little tray in the middle. Each player gets all the dice of a single color, which are seven normal sized die and one large die, which is affectionately known as Biggie. Shuffle up the deck of money cards. They range in value from 10,000 to 100,000 in this version. It goes up to 90, I think, in the original. So you're gonna shuffle that up. And at each casino, you're going to deal out two cards at the start of every round. Note this is a little bit different. I should start at one. Note this is a little bit different than what they say in the rules. The rules, uh, the rules tell you to deal out six piles and then sort them so the highest valued one is at the six and the lowest valued one is at the one. You only need to do that if you're playing with the special powers. The rules also say in this version that each player gets some of these chips, which can be used to pass your turn, uh, skip your turn. Every chip you have at the end of the game is worth 10,000. I don't play with these. They don't appear in the original game. And that's it, you're ready to begin the round. Pick a start player. The start player is going to roll all eight dice. And if you want to, you can roll them in the middle here and group them by value. You're going to pick one value and all the dice of that value are going to be claimed. You can't choose to just take some. So what you're trying to do is to have the most dice at a particular casino. If you have more dice than any other player, no ties, then you will get the most valuable money card at the casino. The player who has the second most dice gets the second most valuable card, anybody else gets nothing. But the catch is that there are no ties. Any players who are tied 
are immediately out of the running and they have to remove all their dice. So blue, for example, could take these three twos and put them here at this casino, really hoping to discourage anybody else from going to this casino. That means they'll get the 100,000. If you play your biggie instead, that counts as a single die, but it's worth two when evaluating how many dice you have at the casino. So right now, blue has two dice at the four casino. So pick a value, take all the dice of that value, put them at that casino, and then the player takes back the rest of their dice. They will re-roll these at the start of their next turn. Then it's the next player's turn. They have a single five. Maybe they're gonna take a single five and put it there, and that's all they'll do. So as you can see, players are gonna run out of dice at different speeds. Blue is running out of dice faster than green. If there's one player left at the end of the round, they're the only player that has dice left, they keep taking turns until all their dice are assigned. So what we're going to do is we're going to play through the whole round. I'm gonna use, this is a three player game. I'm going to roll for all the players and then we'll see what happens at the end of the round. And so now this is the end of a round. All the dice have been assigned. Of course, that last roll that you have, you don't have any option. Whatever you roll, that's the casino you're putting them in. And now you look for draws, ties, players that have the same number of dice in a particular casino. Starting with the one, you'll see red has two, green has one, and blue has a biggie, which is worth two. So blue and red, are tied. They would go away, they don't get anything. Green, being the only player left, would get the highest valued card, the 60, and nobody gets the lower valued card because there's no other players there. In this case, blue would get the 100,000 and red would get the 80. Here, all three players are tied, so nobody would get anything. Green gets the 80 and red the 60. Here, red has three, green has two, so red gets the 90, green gets the 30. And here, two and one, no tie, so green and blue each get one of the 40s. So that's it, that's the one round, players get all their dice back, and then you can deal out cards for the next round and do that three times. In the original game, it was four rounds, Three rounds is enough. You can play three rounds. If you're playing with fewer players, you can consider playing four rounds, but otherwise three rounds is perfectly fine. So the advantage of Las Vegas Royale is that it also comes with extra powers. At the start of the game, you're going to mix up all these extra pieces and mix them up and they're double-sided. So take some of them and do them like that and then deal one at random to the lowest three casinos. I won't get into the special powers for all of them. You'll have to check the rules. And when you're playing with the special powers, then every, at the start of every round, when you're dealing out cards, instead of dealing them directly to the six casinos, deal out the money into six piles and always place the lowest pile in the one and the highest pile in the six. So putting dice in the higher casinos, you're vying for the most, the more valuable piles of cash. And in the lower casinos, it's less cash available, but when you place dice, you may be able to activate the special power associated with that casino. Or sometimes the player who wins it at the end will get a bonus as well. That's it, you're ready to play Las Vegas. Las Vegas was nominated for Game of the Year in 2012, lost to Kingdom Builder. I would argue that Las Vegas would probably have been the better choice. I find that Kingdom Builder can be divisive for certain gamers, especially after they've only played it one time. I've seen a lot of hobbyists play Kingdom Builder one time and then just like, ah, oh, what a terrible game. And you play it multiple times and it's great. But what about families, right? Maybe families play it once and think like, oh, what's this? Las Vegas is a game for everyone. 
like Picomino, which was a couple of videos ago, this is a three generation game. All right, anybody can enjoy it any age. It's a great accessible game, very light, very lucky because of the dice. It's a dice game, but also very exciting with cheers and groans, which is great. I think when the game first came out, maybe some hobbyists thought of it a little bit of an odd duck for Alea. Alea is a very famous brand, um, famous for games that are appealing to hobbyists, right? Games that hobbyists would very much like. But that doesn't mean they only publish heavy games. A lot of hobbyists would know the most for their heavy games, like all their Feld games. But the fifth game in their old big box series was Adelreflichtet, otherwise known as Hoity Toity. That's a super light family game. Ra is not that complicated. Chinatown's not that complicated. In the medium box series, you have other light games um, like, well, St. Mallow, which I think came after this one. Um, which is Brew's not that complicated. In the small box, you have like Wyatt Earp and, and Royal Turf, which later would become known as Winner's Circle. Alea has always published light games. This is one of the lightest. And it has the broadest appeal of any Alea game that I've played. It does have an excitement to it. And I guess that's why it has a casino theme. Honestly, the casino setting doesn't really come through because you're not gambling per se. The fact that you're rolling dice and assigning them to casinos, like there's no real world connection to this, right? It's not like I'm going to play craps and I'm going to roll the dice first and then decide which craps table I'm going to apply it to. Like, what? <laughs> it's a light glazing of a setting. You know what? If it, you could do it completely abstract, just no imagery at all. But if imagery makes a game stand out a little bit, make it a little bit more fun. I think the casino imagery is as good as any. The game is really, really lucky. It's a dice game. You're not going to really get around that too, too much. Um, there are lots of dice games in which, you know, you roll the dice, but then you do these things to mitigate the dice, right? Like, I don't know, to court the king, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And this isn't really that, right? You roll the dice and you pick a value and you commit that value to the matching casino. And the only decision is what value. But it doesn't mean there are no decisions. Every time you roll, there's a decision. Which casino are you going to put your dice in? It can be a decision as to how much you want to commit. Because like if you roll all your dice and a lot of them come up the same value, great, you can pick that value and lock a whole bunch of dice in there and be pretty much guaranteed to get the money at that casino. But you're also not leaving much for the rest of the casinos, right? Ideally, you want to have just enough dice in the casinos to win. <laughs> so you want to kind of spread the dice out a little bit, but that increases the odds you're going to tie with other people. And the fact that there's ties, simple little mechanism, but so brilliant. I'm, I'm sure there must be games before Las Vegas that did it. I know Gardens of the Alhambra slash Carrot has a similar thing going on. Anyway, so let's say there's a casino you have... An opponent that has a ton of dice in there, so at the moment they're going to win it. Maybe they have a two dice lead, right? You ideally want to get second. <laughs> or first, but you don't want to tie for first. So you roll the dice and you get one. One of those values that you need. Do you commit that? Because on a later turn, when you roll, you might get the second one and you don't want the second one. You get the second one, that's going to tie you. You don't want to tie. Little decisions like that. Look, I'm not saying the decisions are crazy, crazy taxing or anything. But just don't dismiss it as a, you know, complete luck fest with no decisions. No, it's not LCR, okay? There are decisions to make in this game. Each round plays out exactly the same. So you deal out the money... You award the money or some money goes away and then you deal out more money in the next round. So it's a little bit repetitive. Um, there's not much of an arc from beginning to end. Like there's no context really that carries through throughout the rounds. Each round is kind of independent. In the end, you're just summing all the rounds up. So Las Vegas is four rounds. A normal game of Las Vegas is quick enough that four rounds won't take all that long. But... Because it's so repetitive, don't feel tied to the four-round uh, thing. Just 
you can do three rounds. And the new version does three rounds all, by default, although I will say that there's some extra stuff going on, so each round might be a little bit longer. That's probably why they dropped it to three rounds. I think three rounds is fine for, for any edition, honestly. To be clear, the base game does not need any expansions. It's great right out of the box. Even in the base game, it does have a little bit of variety. There's a little variant in the rules. It's brilliant. It doesn't require any additional components. Just if you're not playing with the full five players, this is particularly good with two or three players, you swap out some of each player's dice with dice of a neutral color, a, a color that's not in use. And then when you roll and you're assigning values, you assign those values just like your own. So you, if you have, if you roll two fives of your own color and one five of the neutral, and you pick five, you're putting all three dice in there. So the play is exactly the same, but at the end, when you're totaling up the values, those neutral colored dice count as an extra player. They can't win, but it counts for ties. So if you tie with a neutral player, you're not getting anything. So simple, so great with few players. Unless you're playing with absolute non-gamers that have, haven't really even smelled a modern board game and haven't played a board game in 20 years or something, Un unless they're complete and total non-gamers. If you're playing with a fewer number of players, use that by default, that's great. So this game is really well made to add variants, expansions. It's a great base of a game that you can add to. And that's important because we're going to talk about first the expansion, Las Vegas Boulevard, and then the new version, Las Vegas Royale. Las Vegas Boulevard. This came out, I want to say 2014. And it says the first expansion. In the end, it was the only expansion. Then they made it just a new version of Las Vegas Royale that has some stuff in there. But it's a modular expansion. This is a kitchen sink expansion. It has a bunch of variants, a bunch of additional components. You can use some of them or all of them. Swap them in and out however you like. And some of them are great, and some of them are eh. Like, there's special power cards. Eh. But for example, it comes with extra dice. So you can play up to eight players. To be fair, you could just add your own dice of new colors to regular Las Vegas. But it's nice when it matches, right? Same size and weight and everything. It comes with extra large dice. You swap out one of your regular dice with the biggie, the big die, and then when you roll that and you add it to a casino, it just you treat it like a regular die, but in the casino it counts as two dice. Little thing. But why not just throw that in there all the time, right? Super simple. Um, you can use one of the player colors that's not in use. They use, they use purple in the example because there's no purple big die. So if you want to use the biggie dice, it only goes up to seven. Kind of weird, but whatever. But the purple dice, you can use it as an extra player color if you're not using the biggie dice, but you can also use them as kickers. The idea is you swap out some of your dice with these purple ones, and then when you assign dice on your turn, if you assign purple dice, instead of adding them to the casino, instead they remove dice that are already in that casino, kicks them out. Again, little thing. So easy to add, right? There's lots of stuff in here like that. There's um, question mark payout cards, like rainbow cards. When you see them, you, you add them to the casino just like every other money card, but you don't know what the money value is. At the end of the round, then you replace it with a real bill. So could be high, could be low, you're taking a risk, right? There's little stuff like that. There's like a slot machine, which sort of counts as a seventh casino, but works a little bit differently. There's stuff like that. Not all of them are absolutely amazing, but there's enough variety in here that if you're a fan of regular Las Vegas, this is absolutely great. Problem is, good luck finding this now. I remember I bought this new as soon as it came out. I don't know if I had a vision or something. Like, I knew this game, this expansion would be hard to find, and I'm glad I did. It sold out, and I haven't seen it since. And now I think this is going for quite high sums on the aftermarket, I think. So instead of reprinting the base game, reprinting this, instead they made a new version called Las Vegas Royale. The first change, that's good, is that they changed the way the bills are dealt out to the casinos. Instead of dealing out bills until you reach a certain total, 
Instead, you deal out two cards regardless. And that's better. Because what happens with a base game is sometimes you'll draw like an 80 and that's it. Okay, fine. There's only something for first place. There's not going to be anything for second place. But a lot of the other casinos will be like 10 and 20 and another 20. Okay, stop. And now there's room for like three places there, right? First and second and third. But nobody's going to want to it's not like all the players are going to want to like fight for that casino. They're all low-valued cards. So just dealing out two cards regardless, I think, is the way to go. You can easily do that in regular Las Vegas, too. That's something you may want to backport. I think that's, that's an improvement. And it comes with a biggie dice from the Boulevard expansion in the box, just kind of as a default. And like I said... It's easy just to use that all the time unless you, you, you know, you're playing with people who have like literally never seen a board game before. Just throw that in all the time, right? So that's a good addition. But some of the changes are different. And look, I get it, all right? You want a new version of the game. You can't really just reprint the original I mean, you could reprint the original and the base together in like a big box. I think that's what a lot of people would have wanted, would have preferred. Um, but the Boulevard expansion does come with a bunch of stuff that not everybody's going to use, right? So it looks like Rudiger Dorn and Alea kind of went back and said, how can we change Las Vegas so that out of the box, it's better for gamers? So this is what they came up with. First, right, the big E dice. Throw those in there by default. Great. Weirdly, the variant in the base game where uh, you know, you're playing with lower player counts, you can uh, players roll dice of a neutral color as well. Super simple. Really improves the game at lower player counts. You can easily do it with Las Vegas Royale. Don't mention it at all in the rules. It's, it's disappointing. In terms of the look, it's personal opinion. Uh, some might think the new look is kind of classy. I do, in general, like the look of the new Alea big box games. They do have kind of a classy look. Um, I find the actual presentation on the table to be kind of meh. I prefer the older one, but it's a little more colorful. There are two changes which are bad for me. <laughs> they might be great for you, all right? I'll describe them, and I'll describe why they're bad for me. The first are chips. Hey, it's Las Vegas. You got chips. Well, they don't look like poker chips. So I don't really get a Las Vegas feeling from them. The chips allow you to kind of mitigate your dice rolls a little bit. So each round, you get a certain number of chips. I think it's two. And at the end of the game, any chips you have left over are worth, I think, 10,000 each. But on your turn, after you roll the dice, if you're not happy with your result, you can turn in a chip and pass. You don't have to place any dice into the casino. It comes back around to you, you can re-roll all your remaining dice. So you don't have to commit, you can stall. You have a bad roll, you don't have to pick something, you can pay a chip and stall. So look, dice mitigation, you know, the bad dice result mitigation. Sounds great, right? Mmm... For one thing, slows the game down a little bit, right? Because the rounds take longer. That's probably why they dropped it to three rounds instead of four. The thing about the chips for me is it takes away some of the excitement of Las Vegas. Some of the excitement, the cheers and groans come from rolling dice. And it's like, oh my God, I have to do this. I have to pick one of these results. I hate everything. Everything I rolled, I hate but I got to pick something. But if you have the chip, you don't have that angst, right? If you have a bad roll, just turn in a chip, you get another chance later. And it just takes away some of the excitement. So I really dislike the chips. I really do. But your mileage may vary. The other thing is something that I don't personally like. And if you know me by now, you wouldn't be surprised that I don't like it. But if you're a hobbyist, you might think this is the most amazing thing ever. Okay, <clears throat> so normally you deal out two bills to every casino. It doesn't matter, you know, which, which ones have high amounts, which ones have low amounts in the normal game. They still say by default that you're supposed to sort them. So you deal out six piles 
of cards. Then figure out which is the lowest, put that in one. Second lowest, put it in casino two, all the way up to six. They say to do that in the basic game, the introductory game, they call it. The regular Las Vegas is the introductory game now. That kind of annoys me. But you don't have to bother with that in the base game. But the reason it's there is because in the full game, the proper game of Las Vegas Royale now, the three lowest casinos, so the one, two, and three, they will get the lowest payouts, but they also have special abilities that usually will activate. They'll activate either when you add dice to that casino or you win that casino. You, you get some special thing that happens. And some of them are kind of cute and kind of casino-y. Like there's one that feels like a slot machine in that you basically roll dice to see if you get the payout. And if you get the payout, great, you got the payout. But if you don't, then the payout increases, right? So then every time somebody adds a, a die, they either win the payout or increase the payout for the next person. So some of these are kind of neat and some of them aren't. Some of them are just duds, in my opinion. And there's a lot of variety in there. I forget how many there are maybe 12 or something, 12 different powers. Um, so there's a lot of variety in terms of those casino abilities, but it kind of slows the whole game down for me. Just in terms of, like, for me, one of the appeals of Las Vegas is it's so simple to teach and so quick to play. And I didn't really need a gamer version of Las Vegas, just my opinion. Um, you know, they're not crazy complicated, and if you're a hobbyist, you won't have any problem with them. But I just hate that tiny little obstacle. Like at the beginning of the game, you deal out the random powers, then you kind of have to read and explain how they work. And the iconography isn't great. So maybe during the game, some people may forget how it works and you have to look it up again or something. Um, minor, but it's an obstacle. It's a tiny little obstacle that keeps me from enjoying Las Vegas Royale as much as the base game. Las Vegas Royale is a bit of a lateral change. For me as a hobbyist, Instead of making a gamer version of Las Vegas, I would have been completely happy to just have a Las Vegas big box. It's already a big box. This box is bigger than this box. Just have all the base game and boulevard content in the, in the big box. I think that would have been great. I understand why they didn't, and they wanted to sell something new to, to their customers. The, right now, I have both Las Vegas games. Because I'm a bit of a collector... I don't collect games like to have them appreciate in value, but I, there's a part of collecting games that appeals to me like is having a complete set, right? Having I'm collecting a series, and LA has always been good like this because they always number their games, right? Las Vegas is number eight in the medium box. This one is number one in the new big box series. And so it's nice to have, you know, one, two, three, just all next to each other. They all look quite nice together, right? So I have a complete set of the medium box uh, games from Alea, which uh, I think I remember showing in my Alea Yakta Est video. And so Las Vegas rebooted their big box series, and the first game is Las Vegas Royale. And their second game, which they announced at the same time as Las Vegas Royale, is Castles of Burgundy. I'm not a big fan of modern Euros, but as modern Euros go, that's one of the best ones, I think. I didn't own it. I was, I was like, okay, that's a good start. I like Las Vegas. Maybe I like Las Vegas Royale more than the regular game. So I'll, I'll start collecting them. So I got Las Vegas Royale. I got Castles of Burgundy. Happy with Castles of Burgundy. That's like a big box version. It has a lot of the expansion content in there. Then they have Castles of Tuscany, which I am not very convinced of. Puerto Rico, new edition of Puerto Rico, which I am happy to get. I don't own Puerto Rico. I would be love to have a, a new edition. But there were some production problems that took it off the market, and now it looks like they're revamping it. So I'm not even sure if it's going to come back in the same format in this series or not as number four. I already have number five, Carpe Diem, which I have never played. I might like it. I don't know. But as a start to the series, this one's kind of left me disappointed. Uh, I like Las Vegas Royale less than the regular Las Vegas but objectively, it has more content in the box compared to regular base Las Vegas. And this, I don't think, is hard to find, this new edition. So this is only a couple of years old, Las Vegas Royale. You can probably get it pretty easily. So you know what? If you have at all a hard time finding the original Las Vegas, 
there's nothing really preventing you, in my opinion, from getting Las Vegas Royale. Just a slightly larger box. But you got more variety. Maybe you'll like the variety. The thing is, is that, in my opinion, the best, best version of Las Vegas is Las Vegas plus Boulevard. But you can't easily get Boulevard anymore. That's the problem. If money is no object and you want the best, best, best version of Las Vegas, in my opinion, you get Las Vegas, find Boulevard somehow, pay through the nose for it, and there you go. You got all the Las Vegas you ever need. You won't have the special abilities for the casinos. You won't have the chips. Don't need them. Don't even worry about it, mate. But from a practical money point of view, I can't recommend people go out and get Boulevard. All right? I'm more responsible than that. So Las Vegas Royale may do you fine. I just got to share my personal opinion. If you just want the base game, I guess you can get Las Vegas Royale. Just in my opinion, just forget about the chips. And at least the powers are like a little bit of variety, so okay. Um, I guess this is better than this alone, but yeah, I really like Boulevard. And if you stumble upon a copy, honestly, even if you don't own Las Vegas, if you stumble upon this, just get it. You can easily resell it. <laughs> but yeah, Las Vegas and Las Vegas Boulevard, that's the way to go if money is no object. Otherwise... Maybe you'll love the powers, the casinos, and Las Vegas Royale. They're just not for me. Thanks for watching. Remember, older games like Las Vegas don't stop being good just because newer games come out. Take care.